Those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Okay, this will be held. Okay, we're now down to section J, papers held in committee. Item number 28, 14 0 16 14, an ordinance by a CDHR committee to amend the City of Atlanta, Georgia Code of Ordinances, Part 1, Charter and Related Laws, Chapter 54, Community Development, Article 1, General, by adding a new section 54 2, Affordable Housing Impact Statements, to waive conflicting ordinances and code sections and for other purposes. And we also have a substitute for this paper, which can be found in each council member's package. Thank you. Um, yes, this paper that's before us is our affordable housing impact statement. We have been working on this and looking at this, and we have had the pleasure of sharing this with a number of people. Um, and I believe we are beginning to uh, start our meaningful conversation about uh, approving affordable housing options in, in Atlanta. Um, uh, there are many things that we will need to get done, but this is one step in the right direction. This step, uh, hopefully, we pass this affordable housing housing impact statement ordinance today. Um, it will allow us to estimate and describe the impacts that various legislations have on affordable housing stock in our city. And, um, you know, we've been working with the Off Office of Housing and CDHR here, committee here on uh, the number of housing units funded in whole or in part by public grant dollars for which affordable housing impact statement will allow us to look into for the next uh, 30, for a 30 year period. And, um, and and if, if approved today and at full council, this will go into effect uh, in the middle of next year to give the housing department time to the, the planning department time to ramp up staff to get and and, and, and um, um, administrative uh, procedures to make this a reality. But. Um, uh, you know, Matthew Cardinale is here today. And he can come forward. He looked at what national best practices we can implement here in Atlanta. Um, and I see this uh, impact statement as a sign that we are willing to take the first step towards a meaningful affordable housing policy here in the city. Okay. Hey, everybody. So, yes, yeah, so we're looking at item 28 in the agenda. Uh, Go ahead, Mr. Cardinale. Uh, it, it, it is 28. 14-0, oh, uh, 16-14 under held papers. And um, I, it was my understanding you all would have the draft in, in front of you as well. Um, yes, there's a draft. Okay. So, um, hi, everybody. Matthew Charles Cardinale. I, it's been an, a year since my last presentation before, uh, before you all. And... Uh, I came out here uh, yesterday. We celebrated 10 years of Atlanta Progressive News. And I'm um, here today to speak on this legislation that we've been working on for over a year. Um, and so I've been in communication really with, with everyone here over the last year. Um, uh, Councilwoman Bottoms, uh, I think we described it as a mini work session that uh, we had the opportunity to share, and uh, and of course work with Councilman Dickens and uh, Councilman Hall, and then uh, Councilman Young also sent a memo that he had requested. So I really appreciate everyone's um, thoughts and. Uh, interest in this issue. So what is this? Uh, as, the, as the chairman said, affordable housing impact statements uh, is a way to keep track of the impact of the policy choices that are made here in City Council on our affordable housing stock in the City of Atlanta. Um, so what it would do is it would require an affordable housing impact statement for any legislation um, in the future, well, after next July 1st, uh, that would have an estimated impact on um, our affordable housing stock. Um, and so there's a, a definition in there that talks about um, housing impact legislation. And the housing impact legislation is uh, basically um, any and all legislation that, uh, including ordinances and resolutions that come before CDHR, that if enacted are estimated to have an impact on the affordable housing stock of the city of Atlanta, including but not limited to land use elements, acceptance of public and private grants for the construction and rehabilitation of affordable housing units, um, abandoned and blighted property legislation, uh, changes to building permit fees, millage rate increases for blighted properties, changes to demolition policies. Um, so these are the 
um, the, the types of legislation that we had in mind. Uh, land use is, you know, one of the most uh, nuanced ways in which uh, neighborhoods can change. And sometimes a developer comes in with an application uh, for, for a land use change and they have in mind a demolition. They have in mind something that's going to come in that may be market rate or may have some component of affordability. We want to keep track of that. When we accept federal grant dollars, CDBG, home, and others, uh, and we are making decisions about how to spend that money. Um, sure, w when that happens each time, sometimes we get that information, sometimes we don't. This is going to give us a consistent formula to keep track of that. Uh, this came out of many years of discourse that we all had. Um, my presentations to this committee under the chairmanship of uh, Ms. Shepard and Mr. Maddox even before that. And uh, I know many of you are concerned with mixed income communities, mixed income housing, and this is a way to make sure that people are being served in each um, each proposal and across proposals. We are um, proposing that the municipal clerk keep a repository, and I think that actually addresses Mr. Howard's concern. We're actually, um, the kind of chart that he asked for is actually really uh, the outline that is already in the legislation, and in terms of having a long-term record of it, uh, it would be available in the clerk's office. So this would give a mechanism for stakeholders to say, okay, what is the trend of what we've been doing for the last last five years. Uh, and so that's a really valuable tool, not only for you all as you're making those decisions, but for people as they're looking back at what we have done. Um, and then another thing that this will do is, because we're at a crossroads right now in terms of affordability and gentrification, we have a lot of great proposals before us. Um, tiny houses, which the houses are tiny, but the idea is big. And inclusionary zoning and land bank authority, and I could keep going. So this will give us a way to gauge um, you know, what the impact of each of these ideas would be and to compare. Okay, well, this one's going to add this at this, but this one's going to add this at this. Uh, so it'll really be a great tool for all of us as we consider um, the creative and innovative uh, things that we're going to have to do to address our affordable housing shortage. The affordable housing shortage is described in the legislation itself in the whereas clauses, and I just want to remind us that we, uh, according to the HRNA report, which was commissioned by the city and Invest Atlanta, more than 25,000 cost burdened renter households subsisting on $20,000 or less per year, and 13,000 cost burdened renter households making between $20,000 and $34,999 per year. Since then, the Dan, the Dan Immergluck study, if any of you saw that, has described what's happening in terms of a lot of market rate stuff coming on and uh, what, what the impact of that is. So um, the AJC actually questioned these numbers, and uh, after an investigation, their PolitiFact team rated my claim 100% true. So. Uh, that's not, uh, that's not very common. Uh, we also have affordable housing goals that are codified uh, from 2001 um, that are in the report that I gave you all a year ago um, that I'm sure you all have read many times. Uh, so, uh, so just this way, you know, since we do have goals, this will help us keep track our, of how we're getting closer to or further away uh, of our goals. Um, again, we're at a crossroads, and I feel like this is an important first step in the right direction because the knowledge, the information, and the data is going to empower us. And I also wanted to say how unique this is in terms of. Um, just across the country. I did find, now you all know this was actually Ben Howard's idea. Uh, he's been saying this for a long, long time, and I liked it, and I decided to do some research and actually flesh it out. San Diego and Austin have been doing this for years, but their impact statements are open-ended in narrative, open-ended questions that they want somebody to write. And I felt that it would be more valuable to have numbers and to have, of course, a narrative explanation for those numbers, but the numbers, uh, I, I just told you what our short so the numbers are important. I was um, excited when I googled affordable housing impact statement a couple weeks ago to find that the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, what's the word I'm going to use for this? Uh, copied. 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 I'm going to go with copied 
uh, <laughs> uh, this, this legislation without even contacting me. They found it on the internet and they, they took the word Atlanta and put in Pittsburgh and they took our numbers and put in their numbers and so um, it is actually pending uh, before their planning uh, commission and so if we pass this today and it ca passes on Monday, we will be able to say that we started an exciting national trend uh, here in the city of Atlanta and don't, don't we want to be uh, first. Um, we have over the last year since I last met with you conferred with, of course I've con conferred with all of you and um, the administration um, and we have made uh, just a few changes to reduce the administrative burden and make it clear. I prepared an administrative memo that goes through the steps of how the Office of Housing would actually carry out these reports. In most cases, it would be very simple because we'd be talking about federal grant dollars. To the extent that it's land use, we have to make some assumptions, some guesses. Um, I've laid out the steps that we would go through, so there would be some consistency over time. Um, so, um, well, I think that was almost everything. Well, I did want to just say, um, so this was the Atlanta report, and this was the Spokane report that I did, because you know I'm going to law school in Spokane. And, um, and, uh, and so I've actually proposed affordable impact statements for Spokane as well, so that's a third city, and I'll be doing a study session with them on the 19th. So uh, that's just... Uh, further underscores the uh, the idea that um, that we're gonna we're gonna start a really exciting national trend. So um, I do think I've addressed everything I wanted to Good. say. Um, oh, except that um, I wanted just the people who uh, are here in favor of affordable housing impact statements to just raise your hand and let the let the um, committee members know. There were a few people who had to leave, but they also made public comments. You heard from some of them as well. So let me know if you have any questions, and uh, thank you for, you know, for your uh, um, open-mindedness to what I think is going to be a really great tool for, uh, for all of us. Thank you, Matthew Cardinale, for traveling back this way, and thank you for <laughs> um, your thoughtfulness in, pre in preparing this uh, legislation and uh, and uh, doing it here, doing it in Spokane, and working working your way through law school. Uh, so we look forward to you coming back to Atlanta soon uh, with, with that degree in hand. Yes. Uh, comments from council members? I see Ms. Bottoms. Thank you, and thank you for the information you provided me personally on this and helping to better understand what all of this um, means and what we are trying to accomplish. Um, I do have a question, though. I notice in our agendas, the ones provided to council members with the staff comments, there's a concern about uh, the staffing challenges. Um, if this were to take effect immediately, and I didn't know if there was someone here from the Office of Housing or from the administration who can specifically address that issue. Okay. Yes, Ms. Terry Lee is here, and we have talked about those challenges, and I think we've met them. Yes, we have. Good afternoon. Terry Lee, Deputy Commissioner of the City's Department of Planning and Community Development. First, I too would like to thank Matthew for his leadership in moving forward with the Affordable Housing Impact Statement, as well as Councilmember Dickens. He's been a, a very strong advocate, as many of you have, for affordable housing, so we're really appreciative within our department. Um, as Matthew stated, we have been working with he, him himself, as well as the council member, for the past year on this, on this particular initiative. Um, the compromise that we made in order to make sure that the department can and staff up appropriately is that we will actually have this policy in effect as of July 1, 2016. And we think that gives us an opportunity not just to have legislation on the books, but to have an operational procedure in place to make sure that we can comply with what the council has asked. Okay. Good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from council members? All right. Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? All right. Oh, uh, uh, yes, a motion to approve on substitute. All right. All those in favor to approve on substitute, say aye. Any opposed? All right. Seeing none, it is approved. Thank you.